Hello everyone, welcome to our session today. Uh, the title Data Flow for Data Mesh. My name is Ifesa. I'm a Data Flow product manager here at GCP, and with me today is Sergey. Hello, I'm Sergey Olchenka. I'm a solutions architect on Google Cloud. All right, we have an exciting session for you today. We'll be talking about data mesh architectures, what they are, and the problems that they help customers like you to solve. We'll also be talking about how data flow can help you in your journey to build a data mesh architecture on GCP. And we'll show you a demo that pulls all of these concepts together. So let's go ahead and jump right in. For most of us in this session, we already know that data is growing exponentially. If we look back at the last eight years, we'll see that uh, data production has increased about 10x. But what does this really mean for customers such as yourself? What we are seeing is that about 70% of companies around the world are unable to realize meaningful, measurable value from their data investments. So the question that's top of mind for a lot of customers today is how they can cross what we are calling the data value bridge, how they can go from a world of disparate data systems that are difficult to stitch together or to analyze across this value bridge to a world where they are able to break down data silos, uh, enable access to trusted data, and really democratize access to uh, real-time analytics and insights across their entire organization using a single unified technology stack. How can organizations actually do this? There are a few options. They can go with a centralized data lake or data warehouse approach. They can adopt a data mesh architecture or they can mix uh, and match in terms of uh, both of these options that have been considered. We'll be focusing a lot in this session on data mesh architectures and what we think is interesting about the data mesh architecture is that it allows customers to combine a decentralized approach to data ownership with a centralized approach to provisioning the underlying infrastructure and providing a set of governance policies and data management best practices. And the benefit of this approach in terms of value to the customer is first time to value is much faster. And the option also provides more agility. The business that adopts this architecture is able to better respond to changes that occur in the external environment. When we think about the building blocks of data mesh architecture, it really centers around our ability to treat data as a product. And it starts with the creation of these logical groups or domains that are structured around a business's unique context. In addition to that, uh, the domains have to be empowered so that they can produce uh, and share their data products uh, for them with themselves and with other members of the organization in a very decentralized way. Now, while this decentralized approach to data ownership is encouraged, you can combine that with the provisioning of the underlying technology infrastructure, as well as the uh, provisioning of uh, governance policies, as well as data management best practices in a centralized approach. And what these two things come together to deliver uh, are interoperability across data products, as well as a standardized and coherent way to monitor and manage your data estate. From a logical standpoint, this is what the data mesh looks like. As I mentioned earlier, it starts with a data domains that are used to inform the creation of data products. And these data products are underpinned by a set of governance policies and best practices as well as the shared underlying infrastructure, which is used to enable self-serve uh, data production and consumption. Where does Dataflow fit into this data mesh story? Dataflow, which is Google Cloud's uh, unified analytics solution, allows customers such as yourself, customers large and small, to create batch and streaming pipelines that they can use for a variety of use cases. When it comes to the data mesh, data flow really supports the core building blocks of your data mesh architecture. And I'm going to walk you through each one. First, let's start with data as product. 
with Dataflow, you can create the batch and streaming pipelines that you can use to ingest and enrich the domain data that you want to expose as a data product. Dataflow also supports in a very strong way the decentralized approach to data ownership that is really proposed by the data mesh. You can, you or different domains can pick from any one of our SDKs. We have Java, Go, and Python SDKs. You can pick any one of them to create your pipeline. We also have a set of best-in-class connectors that provides flexibility in terms of the data sources or data sinks that you choose for your pipeline. From a self-serve perspective, uh, Dataflow has a bunch of templates that can allow you to get off the ground quickly. Uh, we have templates out of the box. You can also create some templates yourself if you choose to. We also have a bunch of capabilities like horizontal auto scaling and vertical auto scaling that really help to simplify the process of managing and monitoring a data pipeline. And finally, on the governance side, Dataflow has deep integration with Google Cloud's IAM and advanced networking solutions. And this really helps us to enable uh, federated governance for your data mesh architecture at scale. To take us deeper into how Dataflow supports you in your journey to build a data mesh architecture on Google Cloud, I will hand it over to Sergey. All right, stopping, stopping, stop script sharing. Yes. Thank you, Sessa. Let's take a look at the typical data mesh architecture on Google Cloud. Lines of business or different teams in an organization create their domain data, or data warehouses, or data lakes. They will expose a subset of their data of interest to other domains via well defined interfaces. For example, BigQuery authorized views or data streams. They will tag these interfaces with a set of predefined tag templates defined in the central data catalog project. This is done to provide business metadata about these interfaces so that the potential cons consumers can find them and get most of the information needed about the data product. For example, the data schema, product SLAs, uh, product owners, etc. After the consumers discover the product they would like to consume, they will request access to the data and start the actual consumption. Where does data flow fit into this picture? Well, there are multiple places where data flow plays a critical role. Most often, it is used for data ingestion into the main data warehouses and uh, data lakes. Because it works equally well with both batch and streaming data, it's a great unified data processing tool. Additionally, the main data engineers can run complex high-performance pipelines packaged as data flow templates without any or only minor modifications. They can use some of dozens of Google-supported templates, or a central team in their organization can provide customized templates to enable self service by the domains. And for the domains where the data is curated by Dataplex, the orchestration of curation using Dataflow is fully integrated. Dataflow also plays a critical role in a special type of data product, data streams. Streaming Dataflow pipelines can process streaming data from operational sources, enrich and aggregate it, and deliver the resulting data to the rest of the organization as a well-defined data product. And in many cases, the consumer of the data streams or other types of data products will be another data flow pipeline. For many organizations, standardizing and promoting data flow as the primary ETL tool and providing data flow templates and libraries of individual data flow transforms through the central services group is a great way to enable self-service by domains. Let's zoom in a little bit into streaming data products. In addition to persistent data into the data warehouse for further analysis, the same pipeline can enrich and aggregate this data on the fly and provide it to other domains for consumption. 
In case of data streams, the data needed by consumers is computed by the data producer and immediately pushed to consumers as soon as it becomes available. Typically, streaming data product will be exposed as a pop-up topic or multiple topics, and one or several consumers can independently consume it. What's important in this model is that each consumer can create pop-up subscription in their own domains and manage them independently from each other. The only thing that the domain team needs to do is to grant permissions to create a subscription. Let's see how streaming data products work in practice in data mesh. Let's assume that there is a team which manages a website for a multinational organization. Several regional teams are interested in knowing how the web traffic originated from their regions changes depending on ads they placed in particular countries, or if there is a spike in traffic due to some external events. The website domain team built a pipeline that does several things. First, it parses the site click payloads continuously, continuously sent from the Kubernetes cluster running the website. Then it, <clears throat> then it enriches the data by geolocating the visitor IP addresses. It saves the enriched clicks into the BigQuery domain warehouses uh, for further analysis. And in parallel, it aggregates web traffic by the country and region in 15 minute intervals and publishes the data to a pop sub topic. Here's an example of what actually happens inside of the uh, generate statistics and how it's done. Once the pipeline is running, the data owner will annotate the topic where the statistics are published with predefined data catalog tags. Now potential consumers can find this data product in data catalog. They would search for data assets annotated uh, with particular tag templates to show only the data products already curated for external consumptions. Let's see, for example, how um, this process looks like uh, for, for a particular <coughs> uh, central data catalog for a data mesh. In this particular case, the consumer will be searching for data products that they exposed, and let's say they're looking for, for some, some products um, that uh, aggregate to expose web traffic. When they perform the search, they will be able to see that there is a data stream implemented as a Google pops up. And once they start looking at the details um, <clears throat> of, of this particular data product, uh, they, will be able, uh, they will be able to see uh, additional tags attached to, uh, to this data asset. And um, these tags will provide uh, additional product description, service level, um, uh, SLAs. Uh, it will show the product owners um, in, and additional information about the product. And data engineers will be able to get the technical details that they need. For example, see the data schema that the pops up payloads must conform to. And finally, they can contact the product owner and request uh, access to the topic. Once the access to the um, to this uh, particular topic is granted, the consumers can create subscription to this topic in their project. Here you see a subscription in a customer project that's receiving data from the product topic. So the the, the product topic is defined um, in a particular domain, and the subscription consumes from. In, in a different project. And, um, um, uh, and uh, now the, um, the message is actually flowing to this particular subscription. You can see that the, uh, there is information about, um, about the particular time interval and um, this is computed in real time. 
And like we mentioned earlier, a data flow pipeline would be a perfect tool to further process these messages in a streaming manner. In this demo, we're showing you <clears throat> how data flow can be an indispensable tool in building data mesh by curating the product data, producing streaming data products, and consuming data produced by other domains. And now back to UFS. Thanks, Sergey, for the great demo. We have shown you folks uh, a lot of information today. We have shown you, uh, talked about data flow and the data mesh architectures and how you can actually, actually enable data mesh using data flow. We would like to leave you with three uh, next steps. First, you can read about uh, how to build a modern distributed data mesh architecture on Google Cloud. We have a white paper that you can read to learn more. You can learn more about data flow. Uh, and if you want to roll up your sleeves and jump in, we have some Dataplex data flow uh, task templates that you can begin to explore. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. We hope that you enjoy the rest of your time at Google Cloud Next. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot.